Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll talk about the new Creality printer being the Ender 3S1. So I paid for these printers myself, so in no way I'm biased uh, saying some things because being sponsored. Um, and I'll talk you through the features of this new printer. So the printer has the Sprite extruder. So I think this is the biggest improvement. So it's an all-in-one system. Everything is onto that uh, extruder. So you have four screws holding it in so it's easy to replace easy to remove with other add-ons i'll talk about that later and everything is onto that nozzle head so the extruder so you'll have some fans you have the sea air touch you have a fan directly onto the nozzle um, and then you have a circuit board holding all the cables so it's very nice to have everything nicely collected on that board and it's uh, a nice way to have a good cable management so everything is into that one cable connected to the power supply so the thing is so you have the uh, fan directly onto the nozzle so in front so uh, it should give you better prints having it that way it's a direct drive extruder so you have no Bowden tube so it's very easy to remove filaments and change things so here you can see this is the uh, direct drive um, like pulling the uh, PLA through the nozzle so there is also the Sprite Extruder Pro I'll talk about that later so uh, this model isn't is not an all-metal hot and the Pro is so you have the sea air touch bed leveling so it's uh, in 16 points you can level your bed um, keep in mind that you still have to level your bed but it just helps uh, with the fine-tuning so you also get a filament run out sensor so in case uh, you run out of filaments the printer will stop and you'll be able to resume or print so it also has a spring steel uh, PC bed um, I'll talk a bit more about that later um, so it's it's easy to remove in a way parts from your bed so the um, Ender S1 also has a side display uh, it's well programmed I think it's it's logical and you can tension your belts by just turning knobs it's also have a dual uh, Z screw so for um, more stability into your Z axis. So about the printing, so here's like, I did a little test run to see how the filaments um, react or the printer when you run out of filament. So if you run out of the filament, the printer will ask you if you want to can continue or uh, stop the print. So being able to do that, you'll be able to change your spool of filaments and then you can just reload the filaments into the extruder and you'll be ready to go again at printing so there are some little downsides so it's a little bit of under extruded uh, in the beginning uh, but then it will start printing again so it's a way to save your print another feature is that if you run out of power the uh, ender 3s1 will keep uh, its position in the Z axis. The only downside is that while the nozzle is still hot, it will goose out some filaments onto your parts. So that's a little downside, but in a way, if you can save your parts um, that way, I think it's a good thing to have. So I, I never had uh, a power run out, or I so I didn't have really to use this uh, but this is a nice feature to have so keep in mind that I've restarted the printer while the nozzle was still hot so the blob that it left on the part was still a bit uh, soft so it might have um, been able to improve the print a bit by printing over that soft blob again so this is a result so you just have on your side a little blob of filament but you should be able to send it out and that way you were able to save your part so about the build volume so the build volume of the Ender 3 S1 has um, a build plate of 220 on 220 and a height of 270 so I think it's a bit more than the Ender 3 and that way you're able to print uh, larger parts so I'll talk about that in um, later on in the video about uh, printing in phase mode the other feature is that it's able to change like the uh, extruder so you could be able to add a laser or light so i'm looking forward for creality to um, post and update these uh, add-ons that they will add so about the build so it's very easy to build i did it in around 20 minutes 
So everybody should be able to assemble this printer. The good thing is that most of the things are pre-assembled, so user errors are limited to close to zero. So it's very difficult to misalign things and you should be able to get printing right out of the box uh, when finishing the assembly. So this was just doing the bed leveling and now we'll proceed to the first print. So I leveled the bed, I didn't include this in the video because there are some other videos um, that are better explaining this. Um, so the first print, I printed an astronaut. It's a print of about five hours and 30 minutes. It's printed in uh, gold bronze PLA. Uh, layer height was 0 0.12. Uh, bed temperature is 200 and the, uh, the bed temperature is 60 and the nozzle temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. So I always like to do a raft or, or a brim first. Uh, just to like change the z-axis if needed on the spot while printing and then you can see like a good print coming out of this printer straight out of the box so I just had the printer for one hour then and did this test print and I was pretty amazed by the results so here is the little astronaut you'll see the fine lines um, so it's a 0 0.12 with a 0 0.4 nozzle so this is fine quality on, on this one. So this print is about five centimeters high. And then you can see from the bed, I still use my spatula to remove it, but you can also remove the magnetic bed and just uh, pop it off by bending the plate. So this is zoomed in, so um, with the light on top, so you'll see some layer lines, but I'm pretty amazed by the results so far with this printer. So now to compare it, so I don't have an Ender 3, I have three and there are five pluses. One has direct drive, two others, others are in the enclosure that I did in another video. So if you're interested in that video, have a look at my YouTube channel. So I've printed the same models um, with the same PLA on the three Ender 5 pluses that I have, just to make like a comparison to see how uh, different the print is on the Ender 3S1. So this is my direct drive. So I changed it with the Micro Swiss uh, direct drive. So this should be closer to the Ender 3S1 because it's direct drive as well. So these are Bowden tubes. Um, I'll make other videos about differences in 3D printing if you're new to this. I've been printing for about six months, so I'm not uh, a pro, but I went through a lot of hours uh, of printing uh, at the moment. So we're just removing the parts and then I'll just make a comparison. So this is the Ender 3 S1 uh, in green filaments. Then you have the other one that was printed on the Ender 5 Plus, the black one as well, and the gold one was on the Ender 3 S1. Uh, so just to compare parts, I should say it's pretty close to similar. Um, I don't notice like a, a big difference in print, but I've been using those Ender 5 Pluses and fine tuning them from for weeks or months. And I was astonished just to see like a good print like this coming out of the S1, like straight out of box. So this is Magic PLA from 3D Jack. Um, so it changes colors. And this was with the direct drive on the Ender 5 Plus. So I see that I might do some fine tuning on, on that printer, but um, I think like results are mainly based on user um, adjustments and the profile that you slice in Cura in my case. So this was the bigger one, so on a 0 0.3 layer height. And then like a good thing about the Ender 3S is that it has direct drive, so you're able to print TPU and other filaments as well uh, without having to do some changes to your nozzles or your extruders. So this is TPU, so this was the first time for me printing TPU, uh, getting good results uh, straight out of the printer. So I've printed with um, a brim, so like I was trying to flex it out of the plate, but obviously the TPU is uh, flexible as well, so it doesn't make sense. So the strings that you see are the brim. Uh, I've noticed that in the future I shouldn't need that anymore. Um, because the adhesion to the print bed is quite good. So I've printed a two by two centimeters uh, calibration cube, 
just another tube and I found out that I still have to work with the infill and such to get like a softer part and another thing I've tested is a 0.8 nozzle so with 0.6 layer height so this is a cube of 4 by 4 centimeters printed in around one hour so the Ender 3S1 is capable of printing bigger volumes of uh, filament as well the sprite extruder pro would do a better job with the all metal hot end i think but you'll see like a lot of material being pulled through that nozzle and just doing fine so i still have to do some fine tuning on the bed and the z height with the 0.8 nozzle but these were my first tests with the 0.8 and pretty happy so far so here is the result of that test cube dimensions were accurate so four by four so um first good result so here you can see you can remove the bed i had a hard time removing it because i've printed too close to the uh, to the bed so the z height was a bit off but things to work on so here is the cube it's exactly four by four i still have to do some fine fine tuning like i said and slicing and uh, adjusting some uh, parameters so here's a cool thing about the um, ender 3s1 is that it has 280 millimeters of height so that's quite a lot and in vase mode you're able to print big parts in around five hours so this female sculpture was uh, printed in five hours with a 0.8 nozzle and 0.3 layer height the like errors you see on her chest or mainly slicing errors so this is has nothing to do with the printer so this is about slicing in face modes uh, i'll do a video about that later on as well if interested so it's nothing to do with the printer here i'm doing a male uh, body sculpture it's like super good finish so this was printed uh, with the same settings as well in about five hours um, and here we can see the models uh, compared next to each other so i've printed it as well on a 0.12 layer height uh, not so much difference i have to say but the detail is incredible so you don't have um, the line like the extruded lines lining up line by line because parallelize or phase mode files mode will print in a continuous layer of filament so here you can see the results so it's hard to show it uh, with the lights like like nicely put this on video but these prints are incredible so this is a very good um, printing result in files mode uh, on the ender uh, ender tree as one so here are the things that i like and dislike about this printer i start with the things that i like so the sprite extruder is amazing the assembly is so fast so everybody should be able to do this uh, all cables being managed on that extruder and e being able to swap them out uh, with other modules is amazing the CR touch leveling uh, with 16 points is good the direct drive on this is good as well the printing results are good and the build volume is uh, good as well in my opinion the uh, parts coming out straight out of box using it for one hour i think it's amazing to deliver a printer that can do this being able to print other materials is good as well with different nozzles and being able to swap out that uh, not all metal hot end to a all metal hot end later on and having add-ons is like a big selling point for me so about the things that i don't like so this is important as well so it has the um extruder with a fan on the front so why didn't so my question is why didn't reality sell it directly with the probe i think it's a commercial thing uh, <laughs> i don't have to blame them but um the comparison with the 5 plus is that it has a bigger vol uh, print volume and uh, next to that is the pc um, uh, bed I would prefer my glass bed from my uh, Ender 5, but these are minor things. So it doesn't have a touch screen and the fan is in front of the nozzle. So it's very hard to follow um, your prints. I didn't have that on my uh, 5 pluses because the fan is blocking it. And being a YouTuber as well, it's very difficult <laughs> to like showcase uh, your printer printing things. The filament run out sensor is like a bit wobbly. It's like, it's weird, I think. And the, um, 
the runout sensor is biting into my filament as well but these are like small things that i could change by just um, printing like add-ons or just uh, changes also this pool holder is taking a lot of place so that might be something that i'll change so should you buy this printer i would say I would buy these again so this is a very good printer um, it's entry level if you're starting with 3d 3d printing you cannot do anything wrong you have all the add-ons that the community wanted on the three uh, ender 3 plus so price money wise i think this is a go so if you like this video if you have more comments or questions leave them down below in the comment sec section make sure to subscribe and leave a like so i see you guys in the next one thanks for watching